cardreams.com. Today, I'm not going to talk about technique, theory. Instead, this is the first in a new series of lessons that I'm doing on music production, geared for guitarists. Don't worry, there are plenty of more technique and theory lessons coming, but I think music production is too often overlooked by guitarists. In this video, I'm going to show you some useful techniques to layer your guitar recordings with virtual instruments in Reaper. One of the big pluses with Reaper is the fact that you can build upon its out-of-the-box capabilities by using user-contributed scripts, some which are pretty incredible. In a minute, you'll see what I mean. I think layering real instruments like guitar with virtual ones is a great way to add another dimension to your music, especially given how many high-quality, cost-effective sound libraries are out there, from companies like East-West, Native Instruments, and a ton of others. And experimenting with layering can open all sorts of creative possibilities and lead you in directions you might not have otherwise gone in. And you know, you often hear people talking about how the guitar is losing popularity. I don't know if there's any truth to that. One thing we know is that electronic music is exploding in popularity. Music we hear all the time in film scores. And I think the guitar can play a role in any kind of music. So let's see how we might think about layering virtual instruments with our guitar to create a more dramatic sound. First, there are a few things you have to do in Reaper in order to get going with scripts. Notice my installation of Reaper. I have an extensions menu item. That isn't there by default when you install Reaper, so you have to install the so-called SWS extension. It's easy. Just go to this website, and it's in the video description link. Download for your operating system, and then install. Afterwards, when you restart Reaper, you'll have this extensions item. You also notice that I have this Reapack menu item under extensions. That's not there by default when you install SWS, so go to this website. And that link is also in the video description. Download for your operating system. And then go back to Reaper. Under Options, Show Reaper Resource Path. And then click the User Plugins folder. And copy that file you just downloaded. In my case, I'm on a Mac. And here's the file that I copied. And then when you restart Reaper, You'll see that reapack item. And it might be in the bottom for you, but it should be there. And now you're set up to do a ton of useful things in Reaper that you couldn't do before. For instance, let's import into Reaper a script called Drums to MIDI, written by Reaper user Eugene27771. So go to Extensions, Reapack, Import Repositories, and now type in this URL or copy it. It's in the video description as well. Hit OK. And now we're ready to use scripts written by that user. So let's go to Extensions, Reapack, and this time Browse Packages. Type Drum. And you should see this script called Drums to MIDI by that user, Eugene27771. So right click, Install. OK. OK again. And now that script is ready to be used in Reaper. There's another script we're going to use that's going to be useful later on. So go to Extensions, Reapack, Browse Packages, and type Copy. And you should see a script called Copy Values from Selected MIDI Notes from user Loka Senna. Right click Install. OK. OK again. And that's it. So with this bit of setup out of the way, imagine you have some project where you are playing a melody on guitar. If you're like me, maybe you play around in Guitar Pro or Finale or in your DAW and you write out the melody in a MIDI track. So that's what you see here on the top. And then I recorded that. But I didn't record it the same way it appears as MIDI because this would be pretty boring, very robotic all the same velocity, so this has no life to it. So let's hear what I recorded. It's nothing special, a very simple melody. Now something else worth pointing out is that in Reaper you have your default tempo, but when I played this I didn't play to a click track or anything, so I had no idea what the tempo was. So let's adjust the tempo so that we know approximately what the tempo of this piece would be so that we can later add bass or drums if we wanted to. 
Let me adjust this to 90. Move the guitar to start at the second measure. You know, it's not exact, but we have an idea of now what kind of tempo might fit later on. Now for that to work properly, you have to go to File, Project Settings, and make sure that Time Base is set to Time. Otherwise, Reaper is going to stretch the audio if you change the tempo. Now wouldn't it be great if we could match the MIDI so that the MIDI notes are playing in sync with the audio? Well, we can do that. And we'll use that drum to MIDI script that you imported into Reaper earlier. So click the audio and make sure the time selection is for the audio you're interested in. The script requires that to work properly. So now go to Actions, Show Action List, and you should see a script called Drum Trigger. That's the one we added earlier. If you don't see it right away, just type Drum. Run close. Hit get selection. So here we see a purple waveform. And what that actually means is that the script has filtered out pretty much everything. Everything below 9,000 hertz is being cut out. Now that makes sense for percussion and things like cymbals and rides where there's a lot of high frequency content. But for guitar, we want to go down to around 60 hertz or so. And we don't have to go all the way up to 20,000 hertz, maybe 2,000 or so. Now we actually see all the guitar notes detected. In reality, you're probably not going to get that lucky. So let me adjust some things so we see some false hits. So threshold, and as I move that, you'll notice the two horizontal lines in the middle are moving apart. That tells the script what's the minimum volume of a note. Sensitivity tells it how strict to be about calling something a note. In retrig, that means what's the minimum time between two detections. So if you adjust it higher, you'll get rid of really closely spaced detections. So you want to adjust those values. And now I'm back to all notes being detected. But in reality, you're probably not going to be able to detect everything just with these settings. So you might need to delete a marker. So just click near it, right click, delete. Or you might need to manually add something. So click, right click, insert. Or you might need to change the location of a marker. So shift, click. And you can move it around. Then hit Create MIDI. Close out of here. And now, if we click this, you'll see you have all the detected notes and their velocity. So this is now going to follow the volume contour of the guitar part that I played. Everything is marked as the same note, but we don't care because in our MIDI track with the melody, we already have all the notes by pitch. So now we can take this MIDI data and adjust the timing and velocity on this track. Now first adjust the length of this MIDI piece so that it starts at the beginning, like this one up here. I found the script that we're going to use only works if that's the case. So now click this MIDI item all the notes should be selected. If not, make sure you select every note. And now go to Actions, Show Action List, and you should see that script called Copy Values from Selected MIDI Notes. This is what we're going to use to copy this data onto that other MIDI track. Hit Run Close. And notice it says got 14 notes from track 6. We only care about position and velocity since we already have the pitch in our original MIDI file on top. So now I'll close out of here, click on the MIDI track with our actual melody, make sure all those notes are selected, and hit Apply Values. And you'll notice that it's now been adjusted in time, as well as the velocity. So we have that velocity contour, that volume contour. 
So we now have a part that's ready to be layered on top of the guitar. And I want to show you one other thing. Notice how I have spaces between notes in some places. We might want to have each note end at the beginning of the next note. So you can select all the notes, go to Edit, Set Note End to Start of Next Note, Legato. And that'll be useful when we layer because otherwise we might notice pauses between notes and it might not sound so good if we layer with another instrument. Uh, but you don't need to do that, it's just a good trick. And we're now ready to layer our guitar part with some virtual instruments. I load an east-west player on this track and I've downloaded various instruments through their cloud subscription service including this EW Ra which has some pretty cool wind plucked and other types of instruments from different countries and different regions. So I have a koto, which is a string instrument, and a duduk, which is a flute-like wind instrument. And I've panned the koto to the right a bit, and this one, this duduk, to the left. Let's hear how that sounds by itself without the guitar. First, I'll copy this MIDI track to the one below it, where I have East-West Player loaded. And now let's see how that would sound with the guitar. So I think it's starting to sound pretty cool. It's something that I could develop into a larger composition, a larger production. And in the East-West player, you can make all sorts of adjustments. I could control the octave, volume, pan. I can even add effects. And now, let's say I wanted to go for a larger orchestral sound with a string section. So I'm going to mute those two instruments that I just played. And I already have preloaded a string section with violins, viola, cello, and bass. And notice on the violins, one of the violin sections is up an octave. That's what this 12 means, 12 semitones. Another violin section is up two octaves. The viola is at in touch. That's at the default octave. Cello, I've moved down an octave. And the basses, I've moved down two octaves. So now let's hear how this melody would sound with the guitar and being doubled by an entire string section. So it's certainly a much larger, more dramatic sound than just a guitar alone. And again, it's a type of thing that you could imagine leading to more development. In this case, every instrument is playing the same melody. In reality, I would probably harmonize the piece a bit, have some instruments play the melody and some instruments play at different intervals to create a more harmonized sound. But I think you get the point. And now let's say we wanted to go for more of an electronic sound. So I'm going to mute the track that I had that East-West player on. And I'm going to copy this top MIDI track to this track here at Synth 2. And here I loaded this really cool free VST called UVI Workstation that has some pretty cool built-in sounds. And it's multi-timbral, which means you can layer sounds, which is really cool. So I have these four sounds. This water plug is kind of a cool watery sound. Cityscapes is a big deep bass. Explosion of Blues is kind of an electronic organ type of sound. And Moonbeam Keys is kind of a ambient pad type of sound. And I've done some panning. So let's see how that would sound layered.
So, you know, that's something that could have some potential, kind of like an intro to a European trance piece. So that's it. Now, I know this was a pretty simple example. I only had 14 notes here, but, you know, I recently recorded Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata, where I'm speeding up and slowing down my guitar playing over the course of five minutes, and there are about a thousand notes played, and I'm going to use the same technique to layer that five-minute guitar part. So hopefully you get the idea, and you'll find this useful for your own musical work. So, till next time.